Good. Um, so everyone, thank you for joining us um, for our webinar this morning. It's our second one um, under the Ask the Experts virtual um, program. Um, just a couple things before we get started. Um, again, we're broadcasting on Facebook Live for those of you who are having issues with Zoom, so feel free to view us on there um, if, there's any issue, if there's any trouble. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll make sure that we get this uploaded um, onto the Chamber Fa or YouTube channel as well as Facebook. Um, I just want to begin by saying thank you to SDCU for um, assisting us with this program um, and give you all a reminder that next week we'll have a, a session on April 6th um, that will cover online visibility as businesses are shifting from physical sales in their storefronts to online sales. Um, viewing over Google and everything like that is important for your business. Um, after I get um, our speakers introduced, I'll go ahead and turn off my mic and my camera so that you guys can focus on them. But I will um, be looking at questions as they come in. Feel free to use the Q&A feature or the raise your hand feature. Um, and feel free to also submit questions on Facebook Live. Um, and with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Rebecca Williamson. She's the ESD administrator here in the Tri-Cities. And um, Steve Ruggles is going to be assisting her with various um, information as well. So Rebecca, it is your time. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Logan. I, I'd like to thank Logan and the Chamber for giving Employment Security this opportunity to share information about resources for your businesses and employees. I'm Rebecca Williamson. I'm the ESD Administrator at WorkSource Columbia Basin, located off Kellogg Avenue in Kennewick. And joining me today is Steve Ruggles, who is our Program Implementation Manager for the Unemployment Division. What we'd like to cover today with all of you is to share some information about our agency's priorities during this time, discuss the federal stimulus package, go over some resources, for businesses that are reducing your labor force, including standby, shared work, and rapid response. For businesses that are growing during this time, we'd also like to share what resources we have available to assist you with that. And then talk a little bit about your benefits for your employees, including paid family medical leave and unemployment insurance. Good morning, uh, folks. Um, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I wish uh, our situation in the economy was different, um, but uh, COVID-19 has hit us and we are trying to adapt as, as best we can. So just a little bit about um, unemployment insurance. Um, employment security, <clears throat> excuse me, Employment Security Department is trying to get benefits out to eligible individuals more quickly. Um, there have been lots of changes in the last few weeks, uh, both with Washington State emergency rules that had to be implemented, and then also with uh, the federal Department of Labor uh, changes regarding the stimulus uh, bill and the CARES Act. Um, we are looking at expanding the eligibility for those that do not normally qualify for unemployment benefits. Um, I'll cover more into that in just a minute. Um, we also, through the work that Rebecca and her colleagues do, trying to help employers find staff for those essential jobs. There are jobs out there, uh, and those employers um, are finding themselves in desperate need of employees. So how can we help those, um, those employers during this time as well? Um, recent changes to expand access to UI um, is uh, because of the governor's order, to, to the you know, stay at home, uh, social distancing and whatnot. Um, it is expanding access to those that would not normally meet work search or able and available uh, eligibility as well. Um, again, work search requirements are, are now optional for, for all claimants, not just those that are out of work specifically that for businesses that shut down because of COVID-19, but uh, all, all work search requirements are is optional right now. We do encourage employees um, and to seek work and accept work, even if it's temporary during the, the shutdown. Um, an employee can request standby for up to 12 weeks. Uh, historically, uh, the employee could only request up to, up to four weeks, and the employer could request for an additional four weeks for a total of eight. Now, either the employer or the 
uh, employee can request up to 12 weeks. The, uh, our unemployment claim historically has always had a waiting week. Um, the first week that, that an individual is, uh, meets eligibility criteria, they would go through a waiting week. Um, that has been waived um, as of March 8th, and uh, there is no longer a waiting week. That means that when somebody files for unemployment, they, uh, unless there's other circumstances, they should generally receive benefits uh, within seven to 10 days. Um, there, we do have lots of information on ESD's website. Uh, it's there on the screen, um, uh, COVID-19 Action Alerts. You could sign up, you could access it by going to esd.wa.gov, and there is a big banner right there in the front that set, talks about COVID-19. You could sign up for alerts, so anytime there's a change, um, you could be alerted of that change. I encourage you to do that. There's lots of information on there for employees and for employers um, about unemployment insurance and, and all things related to Employment Security Department. Uh, next slide, thank you. Um, again, just uh, I mentioned some of this. Um, the stimulus package, uh, also known as CARES Act, has three main things that will have an impact on unemployment uh, claimants. One is the uh, unemployment claimants, if they are qualified, if they are receiving benefits, they will also receive up to an additional, uh, not up to, they will receive an additional $600 per week. That is good through July of this summer. And then it will, it is scheduled to end at that point. Um, so every, anybody that qualifies, whether it's uh, on regular unemployment or these ex extended rules, um, $600 will apply to it. Now, though that $600 is taxable just like regular unemployment. So when, you, when an indivi individual files for it, uh, we will ask them if they want to have 10% um, withheld for tax purposes. They could choose yes or no. However, when they do their yearly taxes, uh, it will be considered, considered income. So um, in addition to that, um, some folks, you know, as we, as we get out of our normal winter season, our unemployment rate is usually much higher. Uh, and uh, if somebody has already received unemployment insurance and they are, have run out of their benefits, there is an additional 13 weeks of benefits that's available. So that should start as well. Um, and then unemployment assistance for individuals who do not qualify. That's being called the pandemic unemployment compensation uh, or uh, pandemic unemployment assistance program. That's for the self-employed, the independent contractors and employees that have not worked 680 hours to meet the regular requirements. Um, those folks will now qualify um, barring any other extenuating circumstances for that pandemic unemployment. Um, that, um, and if they receive the pandemic unemployment, um, they will also receive the additional $600 mentioned previously. Um, these three programs are not part of our normal operation. Um, so it's not in our system. We do not have the ability to pay those yet. Um, however, they are working on it right now, and we anticipate those changes being implemented by mid-April. And at that time, anybody that has qualified, we will backdate it and make, to, make it retroactive to the effective date that Department of Labor gives us, which we are expecting to be March 29th, this past Sunday. The bill was passed on Friday, so uh, we expect the effective date to be on Sunday. So that's a quick rundown of the stimulus package. There are some benefits for employers as far as um, relief of charges. Um, I do not know those specifics. I encourage you to uh, get on to esd.wa.gov um, um, to learn more about that. And then also, I believe our UI tax division is sending out an email to employers with some information. Um, Steve, next this, slide. Steve oh, this is Rebecca. We've got a question in the queue. Someone's asking, is it $600 or up to $600 to make them whole? It or is, is it $600 added? That would mean they could make more money than if they were working? 
it's the latter. It is $600 added to what they currently are getting. So if somebody's receiving $500 a week in unemployment now, they have, if they remain unemployed, they will um, be receiving $1,100 a week after this. Great, thank you. Um, talk a little about uh, the labor force and what it means for, for some of you employers that uh, would like to have these employees come back to work for you um, as soon as the opportunity presents itself. We do have a, a program called Standby. It's not a special unemployment insurance program. It is part of our regular unemployment. Um, and it is also not a reason for no longer working. We do get some questions about uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on standby, but it doesn't give me that option. Well, um, if somebody is out of work because of COVID, um, because the work has slowed down, because they're working part-time, um, all that, the, the reason for separation should be lack of work or laid off. Standby is a program we have that waives the work search requirement. That means they are not asked a question when they claim their benefits, are you making an active search for work? Um, our general rules are an individual has to make at least three contacts per week to be eligible for unemployment benefits. Um, if they go on standby, that is waived. They do not have to seek work um, during that period of time. However, we definitely need dates of a, a date of probable return. If you don't know, we are asking you to estimate it. For example, at this point, if, uh, if it may be the middle of February, or excuse me, the middle of May, um, then go ahead and choose the middle of May or even late May um, to, as, a, as a return to work date. Uh, and you could tell your employees if they, if they talk to you, they could also choose that same date. As I indicated, they could request 12 weeks of standby. Um, however, if they do not request standby, or you do not as well, then when they are asked the question, did you make an act to search for work, if they answer that yes, then they will be required to enter their work search context, those three. However, if they answer that no, that is okay. As I stated, work search is optional at this time. They're not required to do that. So they can answer that no without getting themselves into trouble. For everyone that files for unemployment benefits, a notice will go out to their most recent employer, and in addition, in some cases, additional employers if they've had multiple employers that um, have an interest in this unemployment claim. Those notices will go out um, in paper form. However, if you have not and would like to get them in electronic form, we encourage employers to sign up for their SAW account, their Secure Access Washington account, and communicate with Employment Security via um, the e-services uh, online portal. Uh, many of you may already do that uh, related to your UI tax uh, reports that need to be submitted. It's very similar to that. Um, UI tax is one, one avenue, and then e-services for employment benefits is another. I mentioned that because the fact at this time, many employers are getting hundreds of these paper notices and doing it electronically could save them time. And it absolutely helps employment security with workload routing and, and timely action on that. So we encourage you to sign up for SAW account if you have not already. However, when you get those requests for separation information, whether it be paper or electronic, take a look at it. You only need to return it if there is an error or if there's anything incorrect on the form. If you agree with the information on what that individual has said as far as that this is, this is why they're out of work, they do want to be on standby, um, and that information, then you do not need to return that to us. Um, shared work. I am not a shared work expert. Um, the link there is provided. Um, shared work is, an is a program with employment security for employers and their employees that if they want to keep their workforce working, but they need to reduce the hours, um, they can do that and then they will get an additional amount of unemployment insurance. Um, so if you have an employer and you want to reduce your staffing to keep them working, um, 
um, say to 20, 25 hours a week, you can do that and then unemployment will pay them um, uh, additional uh, benefits. Encourage you to reach out to that program um, on that website. They have a phone number, they have an email address if you're interested in getting more information on, on the Shared Work Program. I think, uh, Rebecca, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Steve. For um, those of you that are in the position of needing to lay off an employees and not expecting them to come back to you, uh, when this is over, I want to make sure you're aware of some services that we have here through your local workforce center. Uh, we have career counseling and job search assistance, resume preparation and interviewing workshops. We can also help displaced workers look at labor market to find out where there can be a match for their skills and the earnings they need. We can connect folks with education and training opportunities and healthcare benefits. So if you're in an employer who's in that situation where you're not expecting your employees to be able to come back, uh, please reach out to Jasmine Sanchez. Her uh, email and phone number is at the bottom of this slide and we would be glad to come out and help your employees with that. For those of you that are going to be expanding your labor force during this time, our business services team is also here to help you with that. We would like to help promote your openings and your application process to the public. You can post your openings at no cost on our WorkSource wall website. We can also provide direct referrals of qualified candidates. We have opportunities to provide subsidized employees to you through work experience and on the job training. We have staff that can provide information on the work opportunity tax credit and on no cost fidelity bonding for employees. So if you are one of the employers who is hiring this time, please reach out to our business services team. The email and phone number there is provided and we would be glad to assist you with finding the employees you need right now. What Rebecca is showing on the screen now is a, a cheat sheet, if you will, on who to contact and uh, what benefits you might qualify for. There in the far left column, you'll see some COVID-19 scenarios, uh, and then you could work your way across to find out um, which program, whether it be um, sick leave, unemployment benefits, paid family medical leave, um, that kind of stuff on what you or your employees might uh, be eligible for. Um, obviously, the uh, the green check mark means yes, you, they, that does apply. The red X would mean no, that's not an option. Um, there are some that have question marks in it uh, because there are a lot more details than, than a simple yes or no. So uh, uh, encourage you to look at that and look at the scenarios and find out where you or your staff might, uh, might be directed to go. One of the new benefits in the state of Washington is the paid family medical leave program. This program just started paying benefits in January and it's available for employees when they need time off to care for themselves or a family member. There are three main types of this leave. One, medical leave, and that's when there's a health condition uh, of the employee. Two, when there's a family member that has an issue and the employee needs to take time off to care for that family member. And there's also a third category for those that have a family member who is returning or about to be deployed overseas. More information on this program is available at the website at the bottom of the page. Okay, just a little bit more information on unemployment insurance. I will go through these fairly quickly um, because I probably covered them and I don't want to uh, restate them. Um, and then we'll take some questions. So if you have the, uh, the, the Zoom meeting up and you could submit questions and we'll facilitate that. Um, unemployment insurance is a program for employees that lose employment due to no fault of their own that it's, it's not a wage replacement, it's not, a equal, it's not an equal replacement. Um, they get a portion of, of, of their benefits um, and while they're out looking for work or during that, that temporary um, um, layoff. 
Um, it is not based upon financial need at all. It is based upon eligibility. Do you meet the eligibility criteria to receive those benefits? As employers are probably well aware of, um, they pay a quarterly unemployment tax uh, for this purpose, and then that unemployment tax is, uh, is socialized for those that are receiving benefits. For regular unemployment, an individual needs to have worked at least 680 hours during their base year. That base year is a 12 month period of time. Um, that is the first four of the last five quarters. If they do not have 680 hours during that 12 month period of time, we have an alternate base year that is for the last four quarters, four completed quarters. Um, but they could only file for an alternate base year if they do not qualify for the regular base year. And with part of the stimulus I mentioned, pandemic unemployment assistance will allow um, somebody to receive benefits that way if they have less than 680 hours. So that's not the normal rule, but, uh, but it will be uh, in place here shortly. Um, to qualify for a Washington claim, some of an employee's wages during that base year have to be in Washington. If they worked in, in Oregon and Washington, we could pull those wages to Washington and they can get a claim from us. If they have wages only in Oregon or in Oregon and California, they will need to contact that state or those states to see about getting benefits from there. But for Washington, you must have at least one hour of earnings in Washington to be able to pull wages from another state. Um, the website's there. Um, you can go, you could apply uh, for unemployment insurance benefits by going to that esd.wa.gov uh, website. We are also conducting um, almost daily uh, WebEx sessions to help people um, file for uh, unemployment and then, uh, and then, but previous to that, to set up their SAW account. Um, to get uh, a schedule, please visit that website. Um, to find the schedule for the webinars there. Um, if all else fails, you can call our claim center at 1-800-318-6022 um, and have somebody you know, over the phone take your claim for you. I will mention that um, our phone volume has uh, increased significantly over the last few weeks um, and it is difficult to get through. Uh, but please uh, have your employees continue to try um, our phone lines are open Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, and then also on Saturday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, if you have the ability to request a call back, um, then we, our staff are working uh, seven days a week um, to process claims and make calls back. Um, one important thing to note is when we call customers, if it's seven o'clock at night, if it's Saturday or Sunday, um, oftentimes they don't expect the state office to be calling them during that period of time. And the caller ID does not say it's coming from un unemployment or the state of Washington. So please encourage your employees to answer the phone if they're expecting a call back from unemployment insurance. Um, we cannot control that caller ID. The local carrier does that. Um, but uh, we, we are missing lots of callbacks because um, I believe we're all afraid of getting those telemarketer calls. But in this case, um, take the risk, answer the call. And with that, I'll pause there um, to see if there's any questions to address. Yeah, so we have a couple questions that came through on Facebook. Uh, the first one is from Becca. She's wondering, with the increase of claims, um, has the time frame for the adjudication process been extended? And how long are people with this status having to wait for a decision during this time? Good question. Um, we are uh, being lenient on response times um, um, from employers and or uh, the employees that are claiming benefits. Um, as far as the response time uh, on how long it's taking us to adjudicate those claims, um, we've tried not to let that impact um, um, the timeliness. Um, so it currently is taking between four and six weeks uh, to get benefits. However, some folks might have seen a denial or may be waiting for a decision 
uh, because we were waiting for direction from Department of Labor on on some of these ex extended or th some of these exceptional rules that had to be created. So there are some cases, but for the majority of the, the, the decisions, they're being decided within four weeks or near four weeks. Okay. The second question comes from Lydia. Um, she says that her claim for March 22nd to March 28th keeps stopping her um, from saying she worked. Um, she, let me, re, let, me, let me start over. She said, my claim for March 22nd through March 28th keeps stopping me saying I worked, uh, but she did not. How can she get it to accept her answer of no? Um, she said that she's having some issues connecting with the offices. Um, as, I, as you kind of said, the calls are kind of wild right now. Um, but do you have an answer for the first part of that? So uh, not specific. However, what that tells me is that there we have information that leads us to believe that she has hours that previous week or during that week. So whether a last day of work or whether there was a vacation pay or sick leave claimed, but we have reason to believe that there should be hours reported for that previous week that she's trying to claim. Um, Hopefully that helps. If not, the only way to, to resolve that would be to speak with somebody um, to find out uh, what, what specifically they're looking for, what period of time they're looking for. Okay. And then uh, two more came in in Zoom. Um, the first one, uh, if I set up all of my employees on standby and they have worked some hours, how do they report their hours um, if they pay biweekly? Good question, good question. We have a lot of employers that have reduced hours or that are paying their staff uh, partial. Um, so when that individual claims for their weekly benefit, for example, this week, um, the employee will be claiming for unemployment for last week. So it's going to want them to report the hours and earnings they got for last week, regardless of whether they're paid for it yet or not. But if they're going to be getting paid for 20 hours last week, they need to report 20 hours and the pay for last week. Um, even though, uh, you know, some of us, you know, we may not get paid until say April 10th, but if they had earnings, they need to report it during the week that their earnings have been accredited to. Okay. The next question, uh, it's what if we have decided to not use standby because of the SBA loans that are now available? How do we change the people that are already set up on standby? Unfortunately, you would either have to send back that request for separation form, or if you have a significant number of them, you can create a spreadsheet um, and uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet with their name and, and, con and, and identifying information and the dates of, of standby or what you want to do, and then you could fax that in um, to, to us. I don't have that fax number off the top of my head. Go to esd.wa.gov and you should be able to find that. But uh, that's what I would suggest doing is, is either return those, those forms or send in a spreadsheet with all, all your, your employees. Perfect. Well, that is, covers all the questions. Um, so I think with that, we will go ahead and wrap it up. Um, Thank you guys for participating. Um, I almost said this afternoon, but this morning. Um, I will, um, of course, this, this will be uploaded onto the, the Chamber Facebook page as well as our YouTube page. So for those um, who need to kind of go back and recap some information, it'll be available on there. Um, and again, thanks to STCU for assisting with this program. Um, I just wanna remind everyone again, April 6th, um, 11 o'clock, we're gonna be talking about shifting onto um, online sales and um, having an online presence um, now that a lot of customers are moving in that direction. Um, so thank you again, Steve and Rebecca um, and everyone. Thank you for